So example one, study of the number of girls in families with five children was done on 100 families. Uh, results given in the table below. So these are our observed frequencies. It's suggested that distribution may be modelled by a binomial distribution with p-value of 0.5. So known p-value, be aware of that. So we need to use our binomial to work out what our expected frequencies should be. But firstly, the question asks us to give reasons why a binomial might be appropriate for this scenario. So they quite often ask you things like this to kind of justify um, assumptions of a binomial. So for this situation, there is a fixed number of children in the family. So n is equal to five. The trials are independent of each other. Uh, and there are two outcomes each trial. Uh, and um, the assumption that a girl is as likely as a boy is a reasonable one. So a p-value of 0 0.5 is sensible. Um, and we can assume that the probability um, remains constant. So the kind of general conditions that match up with a binomial distribution apply. And that's what that's looking for. Now, going ahead and actually doing the test at the 5% significance level, we proceed as follows. Null and alternative. The binomial is suitable. So the observed and the expected will closely match. Uh, and alternative, not suitable. The observed and the expected won't closely match. So to work out the expected values, we need to use our binomial distribution. So we need to use that to work out x is 0, x is 1, x is 2, 3, 4, uh, and 5, uh, etc. Um, and you can get those off your calculator. You could have tabulated them in a list or worked them out individually. Notice that some of those expecteds, though, are um, less than five. We've got a less than five at that end and a less than five at that end. So in this instance, we have to combine cells. So we combine uh, the cells at the start and the cells at the end. So you must always check to see whether combining cells is required before you proceed. Now we're in a situation where we have got a table complete with um, cells combined. So we can pick off our degrees of freedom, number of cells four, just one constraint because P was given, so three degrees of freedom. Um, from the values in the table, calculate your goodness of fit. Pick off your critical region for three degrees of freedom at the 0 0.05 level. Okay, I think that's an error, 0 0.5. Uh, should be 5% um, significance level, so 0 0.05. And that's equal to 7.815. Okay, and then... Once we've got to this stage, we're performing the test as normal. So the only thing that's different if you start off with a known distribution is you need to use that distribution to work out the expected. Um, once you've got the expected, you're then just doing the chi-squared goodness of fit test as normal. Uh, in this case, we reject H0 um, because the goodness of fit statistic was high and significantly higher than our critical region. So uh, the number of girls in families of five cannot uh, be modelled by a binomial distribution. It doesn't match up.